Hey everybody, I'm Nityanandan. This is the first lecture in our channel, Talk Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to see the topic Thanatology from the subject Forensic Medicine. First thing, what is Thanatology? Thanatology is the subject which deals with the study of death and in Greek, Thanatos means the god of death and logi as you know which means study so thanatology the study of death so at first we must know about the stages of the death the first stage is somatic death and second stage is molecular death so there are two stages of death somatic death somatic death is the cessation of the functions of even one of the vital organs of tripod of life such as respiration or circulation or brain function or all the above so what is tripod of life? Let's see that. Tripod of life consists of three organs, heart, lungs and the brain. So, if the heart is irreversibly damaged, that leads to syncope. And if lungs, that leads to asphyxia. And if the brain, that leads to coma. So, this is the tripod of life, which is the essential thing for the life. So, what is molecular death? It's a death where each and every cell in the living body dies. Molecular death occurs in two to three hours after completion of somatic death. This 2 to 3 hours time period is due to the remaining ATPs in the cells. So it takes 2 to 3 hours for ATPs to get depleted. That Then it leads to the molecular death. That is the death of each and every cells in the living body. So let's see some time period for death of some organs after somatic death. Nervous tissue which has very rapid rate for dying. And for brain that takes 5 minutes after somatic death. And for the muscle, it takes 1 to 2 hours after the somatic death. This 1 to 2 hour time period is due to, due to the large quantity of ATPs present in the muscle for muscle contraction. So it takes 1 to 2 hours for the ATPs to get depleted, which leads to the muscle death. In some cases, there are suspended animation. Suspended animation is nothing but the cessation of the functions of vital organs even when the person is alive. So, let's see some special cases during anesthesia, coma or deep shock, drowning, electrocution, frozen state and heat stroke, infections like cholera and typhoid and in some newborns. So, finally we came to the brain death. The brain deaths are of three types, cortical death, brain stem death and the whole brain death. Before going deep into the topic, let's see about the vegetative state and the comatose state. So, what is vegetative state? It's the state that pa that patient is awake but lacks consciousness. So the patient has awareness but lacks consciousness. So the patient shows positive signs for reflexes such as corneal reflex, gag reflex and even withdrawal of the hand when strong stimuli is applied. Patient has normal sleep routine. Mainly the patient shows spontaneous breathing. So what is spontaneous breathing? That the patient shows normal breathing. We can note it by the movement of the chest up and down. So what is comatose state? In comatose state the patient lacks both awareness and consciousness. The patient show no reflex signs at all and there is no spontaneous breathing in comatose state patient. Just note that there is no spontaneous breathing in the comatose state patient. Let's, let's see more about that in brainstem death. The patient needs to be in ventilator to get oxygenated where it maintains the functions of heart and the lungs. So the patient cannot live without a ventilator. This is the main point. The patient cannot live without a ventilator in comatose state. So let's see about the first type, cortical death. Cortical death occurs when the cortex of the brain is irreversibly damaged and the brain stem is intact which means the brain stem is not damaged. As you can see, the cerebral cortex in the picture. The cerebral cortex cont contains higher centers which consist of precentral gyrus, postcentral gyrus, etc. The precentral gyrus plays a major role in the motor impulse transmission and the postcentral gyrus plays a major role in sensory impulse transmission. So, if the cerebral cortex is irreversibly damaged, these functions are disturbed. So, let's see more about the cortical death. 
the patient goes to vegetative state and so the patient has awareness but lacks consciousness the patient has normal sleep cycle as the brain stem is intact that which means the brain stem is not damaged so the patient shows spontaneous breathing so there is no need of a ventilator and there may be a chance for patient to recover so these are the examples of some vegetative state patients so you can see in this picture the patient's eyes are open which says that they have awareness but lacks consciousness as you also can see that the patients are not connected with ventilator which means this patient shows spontaneous breathing so there is no need of ventilators brain stem death in this brain stem in this brain stem is irreversibly damaged where the cerebrum is intact brain stem consists of midbrain pons and medulla as you can see in the highlighted area which is the brain stem which consists of midbrain pons and medulla brain stem death let's see more about it the the patient has lost the function of vital organs patient goes to comatose state so the patient shows no no reflex signs as the brain stem is injured the patient cannot show spontaneous breathing as we as we all know that the medulla plays a major role for respiration so once the medulla is irreversibly damaged the patient shows no spontaneous breathing so the patient must be connected with the ventilator for maintaining the functions of vital organs as they are involved in the tripod of life which is essential for life as we seen earlier but there is no recovery from this state and this is the comatose state patient we can see the patient patient eyes are closed which says the patient lacks both awareness and consciousness and you and you can also see that the patient is connected with a ventilator which says the patient has no no spontaneous breathing and the third type whole brain death in this state the brain stem cerebrum and the cerebellum are irreversibly damaged so the patient must be kept in ventilator for maintaining the functions of vital organs like heart lungs and kidney for transplantation purpose patient can be maintained in the ventilator but once the death is confirmed the connection from the ventilator is cut off and in special cases respected organs can be transplanted as soon as possible and thank you for listening to my lecture and don't forget to like and subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon to get notification for upcoming videos thank you see you soon